Hello all you wonderful people, welcome to Lynch Paints. Today we're going to be painting Gorzag Git Stomper, uh, one of the special characters that was released by Games Workshop and it is a beautiful, beautiful redesign of the orcs. Now I'm going to do this today um, in line with the new orc releases that are going to be coming out very very soon. So I thought it would be a good chance um, and a good opportunity to get this guy painted. So first of all, we're going to prime this guy with some Chaos Black. Oh, now that he's primed, I'm going to be starting out with painting his green skin, just to kind of get that out of the way with. The reason why I do the skin first is because it's quite a uh, big areas. I think I should just kind of get them out of the way with, and then I can tidy up afterwards by doing the armor. It's going to start out with Caliban Green and mixing in a bit of Lauren Forest. Cool, and now that we've done the first layer, we're going to just introduce a little bit more Lauren Forest and just a little dab of that good old Moot Green. And then what we're going to do is that we're just going to pick out the slightly raised areas so like his big old gut that's a lovely gut his shoulders and just generally all the raised areas now you can dry brush it which is a fantastic fantastic method of churning out a lot of orc boys at a high quality but because this is a special character we are going to put a little bit more attention to detail in the skin we've done the second layer we're just going to keep on adding in just a bit more moot green each time and just dip your paintbrushes in, into your water just to make sure that it's nice and flowing smoothly so you have nice smoothing paint therefore you're going to have a nice smooth transition with the previous layer okay now I'm going to use a much thinner brush this one oh, there we go in focus <laughs> and um, I'm just going to add more moot green to our mixture so it's predominantly moot green I'm just going to water it down as well I mean this this is kind of wet blending and then we're just going to almost remove the majority of the paint off the brush and then we're just going to pick out the edges and just some of the lighter areas okay so that's looking lots better already. Now because the way that I do it with, with the wet blending is that because you're watering the paint down it means that when you put the, the lighter colour on it may look really really light until it dries and then doesn't really look as light anymore. So again you can just oh, miss his ear. <laughs> um, so again you can just keep on applying layers of moot green and just kind of watering it down to it's it's almost like a wash but not quite um so again i'm just going to go over his big belly his big gut because you kind of think that his belly would be uh, naturally a lighter sort of green as well as you know like his hands and his face and stuff so I'm just gonna pick out little details like his cheekbone his brows gotta get his, gotta get his eyebrows his nose and those segments just above his top lip and then this crease as well coming down the sides round to his huge underbite jaw what we're going to do is we're just going to add just a 
water that down. It's going to add a little bit of bleach bone. I'm not quite sure what it's <laughs> what the paints are called nowadays. I remember all the, the older style names, and then they go along and <laughs> rename it all. But you know what I mean if if I say bleach bone, that kind of colour. I'm just going to add that into the moot green. Just uh, so that's the moot green from before, and then this is with the bleach bone, just to make it just a little bit lighter. Um, it's quite a bit of my brush, so it's going to brush this up. Um, and then this, this I'm going to just kind of do like the tops of the ear. Kind of that bit there. Go around. There. Again, just on his belly. But just where the light would hit it. Parts his face. As you see, the Games Workshop models that they paint, and, and the faces, you always see that the faces are very, very bright. Um, and they're very, very heavily highlighted, which I. It's, it's, it's not my style. It suits, you know, if, if you like that, then that is totally fine. Um, but I just think that the over highlights is a bit cartoonish. You know, it's, it's for some, but it's, it's not for everybody. Um, and then just taking this lighter mixture, we're just going to go back over this vein that I mentioned about earlier. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're just going to do the lips just along here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come back to my Lauren Forest. Yeah, a bit of moot green. And then I'm going to use a bit of this Gene Stealer purple. Just a little bit. Actually, this paint's quite, quite thin. Maybe a bit more. There we go. So you get that sort of colour, just for your fleshy bits. Yeah, I'm just gonna just dab it on the top. Because we still want to leave the under bit of the the lip still dark so you don't want to kind of go underneath and start painting all of that because then that gets rid of the sort of light illusion that we want to create that's just kind of dabbed on I might just kind of go in between the teeth I may as well go all over the teeth why not um and then at least you are covering yourself for getting all the gums um, and stuff in there so that's that and just up in there. Now again, you can go back over and just kind of blob on just a little bit more purple. Just on the areas of the lip where it just kind of bulges out. Now just while the gums are drying, you want to get your teeniest, tiniest paintbrush, the smallest one. I'm going to try and do the eyes. And this, this you want. Very steady hand. I also want to probably water it down a little bit first. Just a little bit. Because this bit in a job, you want to rush. But again, if you do mess up, then it's totally fine because all you can, all you can do really, is just paint over the areas, not in black, 
but in the darkest green, the, the, the Caliban green that we first started with. And then try again. And really you don't need an awful lot of detail in the eyes which is great with orcs all you need is just a little drop of yellow or red or blue or however you want to do your orc eyes it's completely up to you um i just quite like the yellow just because it's a nice contrast and it, it just stands out very very well all right and now it's going to do his big tvs so what i tend to do it's not kind of put too many layers in because you, you see some people that, that kind of they go from like a brown up to a cream and then all the way up to a white um which i think is great for tusks or horns but for these teeth i think i think that's just too many ooh, too many stages and now it's going to add in some Corax white. It's going to go from the top of the teeth. It's going to kind of bring it down a little bit. You can use a smaller brush if you want. Or if you have a brush like this that's got very fine points, then you can do that as well. Do whatever you're comfortable with. Oh, now that that's dried, we can then go ahead and add in a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade, just in between the teeth, darkens it up, blends it up nicely, and just adds just a bit more depth to it. I know that this tooth here is a little bit bonky. Um, but I'm going to fix that out anyway. But the, the mould of it, with teeth is, is always a bit odd with orcs because you can see that there's this kind of top line here that forms obviously that tooth but of course you're not going to have the tooth that the, the, that's the shape like a big kind of board in your jaw so we're going to tidy that up once that's dry cool so then that's the first couple of layers done with the brown um and again we're just going to apply the same technique as we had done with the skin by wherever the light is hitting it that's where we want to have it lighter and again just kind of walking down your paint and if it does look like it's going to be a bit too bright you can kind of see there because you've watered it down by the time it dries it shouldn't look as bright as it first did helping you create that nice seamless blend effect we're just going to do like the tops of the creases uh the bottom of these little flaps on this hat and just the edges bits of this kind of rope string rope not too sure and then just going to kind of swap over to a kind of more ready brown which I have decided to do the tabard. I'm just going to just mix in just a little bit of bleach bone. Water it down just a wee bit. Just so it stands out a bit. So again, I'm just going to kind of do the edge and in between where these rivets are. Just round bit where one's missing and I've also done this this um buckle well right, now that's been done we're just going to take our brown and then we're just going to apply a little bit of bleach bone just to lighten the color up a little bit and now what we're going to do let's get a bit more on there oh too much then what we're going to do is just go over 
some of the edges. So for example, we're going to take the edges of here. Um, and what I tend to do with leather is instead of doing just a, a nice flat line, is that I just kind of just, just dab, dab the edges. And what that does, that creates a nice bit of texture. It's going to do this bit of string, this necklace in there as well. Just do that there. Just with a lighter brown, just to add a bit of just, just di different flavours, different shades. And then we're just going to do the creases, do his kneecap. Remember to keep your paint nice and thin. Just so it looks good. And then we're just going to go over the edges of the leather areas just with this lighter shade. And then just a couple of scratches, a couple of little nicks. So we're going to probably just pop in a couple. Just there. Don't, don't even think about it too hard. Just kind of go. Just like that. Sweet, now that that has been done, we're just going to move on to the metal areas. So we're just going to grab our lead belcher. And then we're just going to just get, get a little bit on a brush. And try and wipe off most of our brush. And then we're going to do one of my favourite techniques, which is dry brushing. So we're just going to start out with his toe boots. Now we've got the dry brushing part out of the way with. I'm just going to do his blade. So we want a good amount on your brush. And what I find is a good way of doing blades is, is following the blade rather than going across the way. Because uh, you will end up seeing the streaks of the brush mark. It's weird that it doesn't really show up on any other colours, but on metallics you can see where the brush has gone. So just want to sort of just follow it. I want to drag down with the length of the blade, and it might be a little bit streaky at first, but if you just keep on brushing over it, you will start to find that it just kind of blends in all together, really, really nicely, and you get a nice shine to it. Okay, now that's done. I went over and did all the gold pieces. So I did his earring, the bullets, and obviously the bullets in the case as well. Um, and the ones I used for that was a brass scorpion, which is a fantastic, fantastic um, it's a gold colour. But it's, it's more like an aged gold, and I, I love that. I use it for a, a lot of models. And just highlighting it with Gehanan's gold. I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced. Where do these get these names from? I have no idea. But anyway, so now I'm going to paint the cloak. Um, I believe on the box it was just black and just kind of highlighted. But of course, this being the wonderful world of Warhammer, you can paint it however you like. Um, so I'm going to paint mine blue for the lucky blue gits. So I'm going to start out with my favourite Cantor blue. And again, we've just sort of watered it down just a little bit. It's going to wash it down a little bit more. And this is going to be our very first colour that we put down. It's a lovely deep blue. Lovely deep blue. I use this for painting my Night Lords. Oh no, they've got some of those trousers, quick. That, but, no. Rip that brush. And then just push it, push it back. If ever you get any paint on anywhere else that, that shouldn't belong. And if you've been following this and you water down your paint, it's very, very easy just to get rid of it. All you've got to do is just, just like what I did, just grab a clean dry brush wet it just a little bit and then just push the paint back to its closest source. Alright, now what I'm doing here 
is that I'm just using pure Thousand Suns Blue just to pick out around the edges and also just all over around the tops of the shoulders because this will help to create the illusion of light coming down and again you just want to water down your paint nicely to get a nice blend to it you can use a thinner brush if you like uh, I just quite like to use just the end of this one it still gives me a pretty pretty good result okay now we're going to turn our attention to the big hawk skull at the back and what we're going to do is we're just going to paint it that iconic white so i'm just using corax white just to go over the raised edge now whereas beforehand if you were painting the cloth you're kind of holding your, your paintbrush at that kind of angle but as we don't want to go overboard on this you almost want to hold your paintbrush almost horizontally with the model that way if you do go over you're not going to or you shouldn't rather um, get any paint where you don't need it to so it's going to do a nice layer there it's going to do the skull on the gun just like that oh and of course here's a belt buckle okay one of the last stages is using some good old agrax earthshade in this we are going to apply just around some of the metal areas what this will do with this that it will just create a more weathered look it's great for using on golds um, again silvers so lighter colors like bone and because it's already brown it's also really good for little bags belts that sort of thing and what it helps to do is that it helps to just pull all the colors in and just blends it really really nicely so I'm going to do it on a couple of these panels. I don't want to do it on all over the gun, for instance, as that would create a uniformed colour. And as we know, with the orcs, they do not do uniform. They like their round, ramshackled, cobbled together nature that we all know and love. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the blade as well. Um, it's like shoulder guard there as well and we'll be right back in a moment now that that has dried I'm just gonna come back to the blade you can do it on other areas if you like um, but we're just gonna come back to the blade we're gonna go to the angled side I'm just gonna get a lighter silver so like a chain mail silver and we're just gonna go around the angled side and you can see how it's really really stands out compared to the rest of the blade because we use that wash what it's done is that it's aged or created an aged look to the blade and at the same time doled it back so when we come around to do this sharp edge of the blade makes it stand out even more and what we can do is we can just go just over the edge of the darker side so when the light hits it it just just catches it you can kind of just see there it makes it look really really nice it makes it stand out it gives it that that extra edge all right and there you have it one finished and very snazzy looking old model so if you liked this video then please give me a like and a subscribe this is my first ever video tutorial um so if i did do anything wrong then please <laughs> please be uh, be nice
that would be fantastic. If you did enjoy the content and my painting, then I do have a Instagram page at Lynch Paints. Um, insofar as the base, you can do whatever you like. You can do a snow, you can do forest, you can do ruined city, whatever you like, desert. Um, what I will probably be doing is a rubble type of base. Um, I do have a tutorial on my Instagram account of how I do rubble bases. I'll probably be doing a video as well demonstrating how I do that too. So, again going back to start the video with the new Orc releases, um, I do have a affiliate link with Wayland Games. It's a UK based retailer that stock all kinds of stuff. Games Workshop, they do Star Wars Legion and X-Wing, they do D&D, Pathfinder, loads and loads and loads of board games out there and card games, not just Games Workshop, but of course they will be stocking the um, the new Orc releases that are going to be coming out. They, are, they should have the new box set that's going to be arriving at the weekend, um, depending on when I put this video out or they might already have it, who knows. So anyway, thank you again everybody, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time.